हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट स्टार्ट सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द चैप्टर टाउन ट्रेडर्स एंड क्राफ्ट पर्सन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द टॉपिक टेम्पल टाउन्स एंड पिलग्रमेज सेंटर्स बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस टॉपिक वी शुड नो अबाउट टेम्पल टाउन्स इन इंडिया सो लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट मेजर टेम्पल टाउन्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ मैप ऑफ इंडिया see this is the map of india and in this map we will see some major temple towns of india start from the south madurai in tamil nadu rameswaram tamil nadu you can see here and uh, second is madurai this one then tanjavur after that tiruvannamalai this one near kanchipuram then kanchipuram near chennai tirupati in andhra pradesh and here in odisha in odisha puri near chilka lake konark also near chilka lake and both of the temple towns situated near bhubaneswar Uh, puri is very famous for jagannath temple konark is famous for sun temple mahabaleshwar it is in maharashtra somnath in gujarat after that you can see varanasi old traditional pilgrimage center mathura and vrindavan both are in up you can see kurukshetra in haryana गुवाहाटी फेमस फॉर कामाख्यान टेम्पल माँ कामाख्यान टेम्पल नालंदा ओल्ड सेंटर आफ्टर दैट इन नॉर्दर्न इंडिया वैष्णो देवी जम्मू एंड कश्मीर अमरनाथ अमरनाथ ऑल्सो इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स सी दिस मैप वेरी केयरफुली and you have to fill the map like this with the help of this map by watching this video and you have to understand the location of all the temple towns so as we have seen in the map that tanjore is very important example of temple town temple towns represent a very important pattern of urbanization why because earlier the temples were set up in those places where the people used to come in the temples and for the fulfilling the need of uh, pilgrims different kinds of uh, shops and different kinds of traders and uh, other shopkeepers came there and merchants also came there they settled down near about the temples and in this way these uh, temple uh, temple locations became the urban areas so the process by which cities develop this is urbanization this is the process by which cities develop it is called urbanization temples are often central to the economy and society you have to remember why because near about the temple the traders merchant shopkeepers etc they settled down they used to do the different kinds of economic activities and trade etc so rulers built temples to demonstrate demonstrate their devotion to various deities they also adorned temples with grants of land and money to carry out elaborate rituals feed pilgrims and priest and celebrate festival so these also were the symbol of the powers of the kings so those kings who used to make the big temples they used to build uh, the big temples it means they were powerful kings they used to do the different kinds of rituals and other kinds of activities so pilgrims who flocked to the temples also made donations so in this way temples became the big hub of economy <coughs> next we can see temple authorities use their wealth to finance trade and banking they use the money that was uh, means uh, gathered in the temple and uh, uh, gradually a large number of priest workers artisans traders etc settled near the temple to cater to its needs and those 
of the pilgrims because as we discussed that pilgrims used to come there and for fulfilling the needs of the pilgrims because most of the people used to come from far areas right from very far away so thus grew temple towns in this way these temple towns became like urban areas towns emerged around temples such as those of uh, bhillas swamin bhillas or vidisha in madhya pradesh one example second example is of uh, somnath in gujarat other important temple towns included kanchipuram madurai in tamil nadu as we have seen in the map of india and tirupati in andhra pradesh also we see in the map in india so you have to remember dear students so pilgrimage centers also slowly developed into township because these centers became the hub of the economy again the people different kinds of people gathered there and they started the trade shopkeeping etc like uh, vrindavan this was pilgrimage center up famous for god krishna the place uh, uh, related to god krishna in hindu mythology and uh, situated in up and through vanna malai in tamil nadu as we have seen in the map of india before a short while are examples of two such towns ajmer in rajasthan was the capital of uh, chauhan kings in the 12th century and later became the suba headquarters under mughals and it provides an excellent example of religious coexistence right where khwaja muinuddin uh, chisti the celebrated sufi saint who settled there in the 12th century attracted devotees from all creeds all of the uh, main religions of india the people belong to different kinds of religious uh, communities they go there uh, means uh, on this uh, particular place and uh, near ajmer is a lake puskar which has attracted pilgrims from ancient times so in this way these temple towns or pilgrimage centers became very important hub of uh, different kinds of activities so what was the network of small towns from the 8th century onwards means after 700 bc the uh, subcontinent was dotted sorry 8th century means 700 ad this was the specific period when subcontinent was dotted with several small towns these probably emerged from large villages large villages uh, changed into small towns they usually had a mandapika this was small uh, mandi like that and to which nearby villagers brought their produce to sell it means the villagers used to carry the things to sell in mandapikas right so these mandapikas uh, became the big mandis and after that they also had market streets called hatta hatta means today it is it is known as hat lined with shops besides there were streets for different kinds of artisans such as potters oil pressers sugar makers toddy makers smith stone masons etc while some traders lived in the town other traveled from town to town and uh, many came uh, from far and near to these towns to buy local articles and sell products of distant places like horses salt camphor saffron betel nut and spices like pepper and these people used to come from south right to the north of india and different uh, town uh, temple towns so these activities were conducted like trade and shops also uh, were there in the uh, hattas or hat it is it was known as in later time so there were streets for different kinds of artisans as we have discussed about so these were crafts people also so dear students in this way this was the network of small towns usually a samanta samanta known as uh, zamindar built a fortified palace in or near these towns they levied taxes on traders artisans means those people used to come there to sell their products so tax was imposed on the trade and uh, on the traders artisans and articles of trade and uh, sometimes donated the right to collect these taxes to local temples so local temples had the power to collect these kinds of taxes 
which had been built by themselves or by rich merchants so these rites were recorded in inscriptions that have survived to this day you can uh, take the example of this one taxes on markets the following is a summary from a 10th century inscription in 10th century uh, this inscription from rajasthan which uh, list the dues that were to be collected by temple authorities so temple authorities uh, means uh, had to be supposed to collect these kinds of dues or taxes so there were taxes in kind of sugar and jaggery dyes thread cotton coconut salt and uh, areca nuts and uh, butter sesame and after that uh, on cloth besides there were taxes on traders on those who sold metal goods distillers on oil on cattle fodder and on lords of grain some of these taxes were collected in kind while others were collected in cash so both of the uh, ways were there for the collection of the taxes uh, means in the kind also and in cash also so dear students we have discussed about this very important topic uh, network of small towns what kind of uh, uh, activities were there and uh, how what kind of network was there uh, from the villages to the small towns as we have discussed and uh, one more thing is here uh, let's discuss about this bronze bell metal and the lost wax technique bronze is an alloy you know that uh, this is uh, an alloy uh, containing both the metals copper and tin so this is the mixture of copper and tin bronze bronze is the mixture of copper and tin bell metal contains a greater proportion of tin than other kinds of bronze this produces a bell like sound chola chola bronze statues uh, we can see in chapter 2 were made using the lost wax technique first an image was made of wax this was covered with clay and allowed to dry next it was heated and a uh, tiny hole was made in the clay cover the molten wax was drained out after that and through this hole then molten metal was poured into the clay mold through the hole once the metal cooled and solidified after cooling it became solid the clay cover was carefully removed so this was uh, means working as structure and the image was cleaned up and polished you can see this one this is the technique that was used lost wax technique a bronze statue of krishna uh, subduing the serpent demon kalia this is Kaliya Nag was also means uh, very famous in Hindu methodology related to God Krishna in the story of God Krishna <clears throat> you have you might have listened about this so dear students in this way we have completed this topic temple towns and pilgrimages in the next video we will discuss about the rest of the topics of this chapter thank you have a nice day